Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad. My name is Austin. And my name is Patrick. And guys, welcome back to our show. Yeah, we got AVT and PAT. They talking about young Americans overseas. We got McKinney, Pulisic, Raina and Des. Got that red, white, blue USA on the crest from England, Germany, from Belgium to Spain. Racking up all the medals on the trophy train. Got one thing on their mind. We're scaling some luck. One day we can say we will win the World Cup. Well, guys, it's great to be back with you again today. And if you can tell, I'm finally back in my house and I got a nice new addition here. Right, Pat? Yeah, I love it. That Young Americans Abroad there. I also have one here. I still have yet to hang it up. I'm uh, a little bit lazy, but awesome. it looks awesome by the backdrop there. So I miss your chalkboard, but uh, no, that backdrop is <laughs> still pretty cool. Yeah, and we want to give a special thanks to your wife, Becky, for making these for us. It's, uh, yeah, it's really cool. When I when I got it in the mail, I was quite impressed. It was a nice little addition. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll sell some in the, in the merch store in the future. You never know. You never yeah. know. <laughs> That's true. So we're here today to talk about, you know, our five players that we're excited to see break out this season. And Pat, I feel like we do this video every year. And it's one of the ones that we have, you know, a lot of excitement about, right? It's always about projecting what the future holds. And um, I think the five players we're going to talk about today, a lot of them are known names, which I don't think there's a problem with that, right? I think, uh, you know, the players that are currently abroad and have been abroad, all these players have actually been abroad for a few years now. Um, it's good to see them take the next step in their career. And I think all these guys are going to, you know, do that in different ways this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's unique because I feel like a lot of these guys are in that kind of late teen, early 20s stage, right? So so maybe they're, they're coming back from injuries, making some important moves here, um, really testing themselves right before Qatar. Um, and it's just amazing, right? Because we've seen them with the U.S. Now we've seen them grow in their club careers, you know, moving abroad or, or you know, this and that. So it's it's kind of I don't know, it's awesome just seeing kind of the life cycle of their career into such a pivotal moment, you know, that that late teen, early 20s age. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. So do you want to get us started with our first player today and probably the most known name, right? Big yeah, let's do here. it. The Medford Messi, Austin. Uh, we all know him. It's uh, Brendan Aronson, right? So yeah, he's obviously made the move to Leeds and Seemed to hit the ground running so far in preseason. Now, uh, obviously, we're, we're only seeing some of those early games there. Uh, a lot of substitutes, right? Uh, Marsh is, is tinkering with his team. The, the signings have come in. Uh, but all signs look like, again, what we talked about in previous episodes. Aronson really fits that that scheme, that system, right? We know his work rate from um, you know the Austrian Bundesliga, um, even Philadelphia, right? Uh, his pressing, right? It, it, it just his style fits very well with the team and and how the Premier League really is. Um, so it's awesome to see that that translate there and him gelling with his teammates so quickly. I think he said in an interview he's already felt like he's known the guys for a year now. He said that the, the locker room, the chemistry is building. Um, everyone's really excited. Um, you know, about the season here. So, uh, and, and I think some of the other players in the interview said he, he's really good technical, quick and tight spaces, the speed of, of how he reads the game, um, all translating very, very well. So awesome to see Austin. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think, again, with, with him, with Adams, Marsh, um, a full season with some of these Americans here, uh, <laughs> Leeds is going to do pretty well. Yeah. What is the name we've come up with for, for Leeds United? Is it Leeds America, is there something more more catchy, Pat? Come on, I, I need you to think up a, a new name. I know, on the spot, on the spot. I wish <laughs> I wish I had some. If you guys know, comment below, or, or maybe there's some accounts off. I got to do, I gotta do some, some deep digging here, some research, because Leeds America is good. I feel like that's a good one, but maybe there's something more clever out there. What if we did um, Leeds United States of America? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> United no. Leeds, no, I don't know. <laughs> no, but, but I think... <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, I think Brendan Aronson's on this list because, you know, with, with this move pad, maybe you can correct me if you think differently, but I, I really think this is his chance to kind of vault up into that echelon of Wes McKinney, Christian Pulisic, Tyler Adams, you know, even Gio Reyna, um, you know, if, if he's going to come back the same way and, um, you know, be the player he was before he got injured, which I think he is. Um, but I think this move is really 
kind of his pedestal to kind of launch himself up into that echelon, right? He's kind of like there kind of, but he's still kind of in that like one B category, right? With, um, you know, maybe like a Tim Wea or um, I'm trying to think like some other players, maybe like Serginio yeah. Dest as well, who may not be like all the way up there, but that's kind of how I look at this, this upcoming year for yeah. him is his like proving ground for that. Very, very much agree with that. That's, that's a great way to look at kind of that, that one B tier. And I think he, know that too he's a competitor he's fierce this is this is the premier league right so again maybe it's not your your arsenal or man city or anything like right right away right he's still so young and and depending on how he does here i mean what's to say maybe he does get um you know move there um a club maybe four or five or six you know i I don't think maybe uh you know man city right now is in the cards but i mean (laughs) he definitely has the, the technical ability and skill. And I think just some areas to work on. Right. And we talked about it here and some things I think Aronson needs to still work on would be in terms of, obviously he's playing quick. He's reading the game quick. Sometimes it's a little bit chaotic. We saw some preseason moments there where maybe he was passing the ball too early or things just got jumbled in the final third. Maybe be thinking a little bit too fast to need to slow the game down a bit. A little bit erratic, you could say, but very minor things, right? I certainly think it's still so early. It's preseason, right? Um, things to work on there. And, and of course, the physicality, right? He's not the the biggest guy. He's not going to bully you, but he does have that pressing, the aggression, the mentality there to to overcome and just being you know swift and technical. So just a few things I think he needs to adapt for the Premier League, but also I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, and, and I'm definitely thinking of some pretty high predictions here in terms of his goals and assist output and where Leeds ends up. Yeah, and I think what what's really positive is he's going to get a lot of opportunities, right? Like he's someone that Jesse Marsh trust, trusts and he's someone that came in for a big price tag. So they've got a lot of stake yeah. invested in him. And I think that that's just going to give him more of that opportunity this year, more time to show showcase his skills if maybe it doesn't go 100% the way we're hoping, um, you know, early on in the season. So, Pat, I want to hear your your predictions. What what kind of goals and assists do you think he'll have this year? Oh, yeah. And, Austin, I'm saying he's – he's. I think he's going to start. I think he's going to get a lot of playing time here initially. I mean, Gerhardt, uh, Gelhart, excuse me, has done pretty well pushing him there. But I think the attacking options they have, Bamford staying healthy, right, um, a lot of things contingent on that too. Um this is really his chance to, to start and make an impact right away. So with that, Austin, I'm yep. saying at least six goals, seven goals across all competitions, as well as six or seven assists across all competitions. Okay. Um, I think that's reasonable. I think Leeds is going to have the output. They're going to be a team that isn't fighting for that relegation like they did last year. They're not going to be a top seven or eight team, but I think they're going to be in a much better place, and Arrington's going to be a huge um, reason why. Gotcha. I like that prediction. Yeah, I think it's – it's uh, maybe not the most aggressive prediction that we've seen out there, but I think it's it's very doable, like you said. And yeah, we're hoping for big things from Brennan this year. So moving on to our second player for today, and this is the one I think we're both like super excited about, right? And that would be Yunus Musa. So, you know, Yunus Musa at the club level has, you know, had a different career, I would say, than him at the national team level, right? We've seen him a lot more at the national team in midfield, you know, his more natural position where at Valencia in years past, we've seen him more as like a right winger, right midfielder. And it's really been kind of troublesome, right? Like, especially towards the end of last season when Valencia weren't playing so well, it just seems, it seemed kind of wrong to be playing him at a position um, you know, at that club, right? So last year he, he had about 1,600 minutes uh, in all competitions for Valencia, which was actually slightly lower than his first season there, his first full professional season. So, um, yeah, I feel like something needed to change. And, um, you know, something that it looks like has changed uh, and, you know, a concrete change has been, uh, you know, Gennaro Gattuso coming in as manager of Valencia. So, you know, for those of you who don't know, he's, you know, an Italian team legend, so to speak, um, who, who was, you know, that gritty workman-like midfielder and, uh, you know, always brought a lot of energy to games. And, you know, thinking of midfielders who bring a lot of energy to games, that's Yunus Musa to a T, right? Right, Pat? So, um, yeah, and, and what we've seen this preseason is him – uh, getting more opportunity to play in midfield. Um, you've seen that in, in, you know, a few of their friendlies to start the year here. So overall, Pat, I think just 
again, having a new coach this year, a new outlook, and also being played more in his natural position at center mid is, you know, a great launching point for him, uh, you know, going into the season and, and hopefully setting him up to succeed. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think sometimes a new coach, new system, things like that, right, um, really does help a player um, in their career and development. So, yeah, I think Gattuso is the right man here, uh, turning things around at Valencia. And, and, yeah, like you said, it's kind of night and day, right, with U Eunice in terms of his national team career uh, <laughs> or national team impact to Valencia, uh, maybe not having those minutes, right? But we're seeing some great flashes in preseason, um, and I'm really excited to see him uh, get – hopefully more starting minutes in the full season La Liga. Yeah, and there's a lot of minutes for him to take up. You know, uh, Valencia last year had Brian Gill um, in center mid. They also had Ajax Moriba, uh, who was on loan last season to them and, and played a really, you know, vital role down the stretch for them. He, he was kind of their most played midfielder yeah. um, towards the end of the season. So, you know, those are a lot of starting minutes that are available for, for Eunice to take. And I think... He's going to get that opportunity. I, I think Atuso really sees um, his qualities and, and sees him for, for the player he is and, and wants to give him that opportunity. Now, I think the one thing that, you know, Eunice needs to work on is still some of that, you know, midfield awareness, right? We've seen in some of the yeah. national team games where um, he's been prone to a few mistakes and um, some not so great areas, right? Kind of uh, in our, you know, defensive third. And, um, you know, sometimes it just seems like he, he uh, you know, is, is a little late to react because he's, I would say more, you know, so confident in his abilities of getting out of the, some of those tight spaces. But I think this year is really, you know, again, the, the platform to him for him to grow an experience at, at playing, you know, the central mid position and uh, again, refining some of those skills. And, and again, Pat, this is a really big opportunity this season going into the world cup, you know, all the eyes are going to be on him when we play. Right. I, have a strong feeling he's going to start, you know, one of our games at the world cup. And I think a lot of people are going to look at him as like this player they'd never seen before. So um, yeah, I think it just, you know, both those things together is time at Valencia this year and also the world cup coming up, I think could be a really positive, uh, you know, create a really positive year for him and, and platform form for him to show off his skills. Oh yeah. That's a thunder and the lightning. Awesome. That perfect storm for him mm -hmm. in, the, in a positive way. Right. Yeah, like you said, you hit a nail on the head, world cup, big year under the legend Gattuso more minutes. I mean, the, 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 the world seeing what he's done for us, like, like in, in contract qualifying and just with the U S the, the world's going to be pretty shocked. Right. And, and I think he's going to, uh, again, I'm knocking on wood here, barring injuries. And that was another thing, right. That mm -hmm. limited his minutes. He had some injuries. He had some pretty brutal injuries there. Um, so, again, I'm not going to wood. But, yeah, Austin, this is kind of a perfect storm where the, the world's going to really know who Eunice is um, come 2022 and the 2023 end of the season here. Yeah, yeah, I agree fully. Yeah, so I guess we should uh, you know shift over here uh, to an attacker, a, a nine, right, a forward, somebody we really need, a striker, to, to put gold in the back of the net. And that is our guy, Austin, Daryl DK, uh, across the pond here in England uh, with West Brom. So long, long return from injury, finally. Great to see him healthy. He's in a great headspace, um, you know, men mentally and just physically uh, as well. You're seeing him already kill it in preseason with some pretty impressive goals and, um, you know, headers running behind the defender back line. So, uh, yeah, it seems like he hasn't skipped a beat there. Um, and, and he's ready to go. So Steve Bruce is really counting on him um, to be possibly that figurehead, be that guy, right, to get them into that uh, championship playoff spot or even just direct, you know, qualification into the, the Premier League, you know, bumping up, right, being promoted. So, yeah, all, all signs are looking like DK is going to have a big year um, staying healthy because, yeah, I mean, they have retained some of the forwards like uh, Callan Robinson and then uh, – was the other one, Car uh, Carlin Grant there, who, who did start in the mm -hmm. preseason game. But DK, with, with the form, I think, we've seen from the past and what he can do physically and um, just being that 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 poacher there, right, and, and having a knack for the final third, no reason he can't displace them and, and be in line for a tremendous amount of minutes this season. Yeah, and I think the one thing I've been really impressed with in his time in England is just – his ability to settle in to, to that culture, that league, you know, it really is a league that suits his, his 
physical style, right? And, um, you know, he's still bigger than most of the guys he goes up against uh, yeah. in the championship, which is pretty impressive. And, um, yeah, he had a lot of success at Barnsley, right? Like, that was a really positive loan move. And, and that success continued back into MLS as well. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for him this year. He also has a, a teammate from Barnsley uh, at West Brom and Alex Mawat, which, um, you know, he played a role in some of the goals that, uh, you know, Daryl scored there at, at Barnsley. And I think it's cool seeing, um, you know, a player that he's he's got to have a close connection with. So, That's awesome. um, yeah, I, I just think, you know, like you said, you talked about headspace. I think he's really confident right now and he's um, probably a little motivated by the lack of mention of his name, uh, you know, from Greg Berhalter or even, you know, some of the pundits and people who, uh, you know, have been projecting our, you know, the World Cup 26-man roster, right? He's not usually a name that's kind of included, um, you know, in the in that list. So, um, yeah, I think I think he's got a lot to, to play for this year, and, um, you know, that should help him keep his mind focused. Yeah, couldn't agree more there. I think that is – and what we're seeing with a lot of our, our attackers, right, and, and DK is going to have that readiness, that fire. Um, you're already seeing it in preseason. So, yeah, I think, uh, again – if he can start here, knock some goals in the back of the net, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to make that roster. Um, because, again, that's something that we're lacking uh, from a national team. Yeah. We, we repeat it we, we, again and again and again. And um, You know, you saw some stints, and when DK was with us, he was hurt. He was, like, exhausted. He, he was, that's like, so a minute true. overload. So he's come back fresh. He's got his body right, his mind right. And, and yeah, I'm just really excited to see what he can do here. Yeah. Now, if you had to pick, I know last week we did our video of, you know, our 26 man roster. If you had to pick a third striker from Daryl DK, Jordan Pifok and Haji Wright, have you changed your opinion from, from Pifok last week? Yeah, I've been going back and forth on this. Um, <laughs> I've a lot of research, to... <laughs> right? <laughs> There's some research. Um, and I want to hear your opinion too. Uh, right now, I think just, I'm thinking like, maybe not just from my perspective, Greg and everything like that. I think, Wright and Pifak are, are maybe slightly ahead of him. I think Pifak maybe is at a big move and, and seems to be doing too, uh, doing well. But I'm regular season comes, right? I think next weekend the championship already starts. Um, yeah. This coming weekend. Uh, if, if DK, shoot, by middle August is, is lighting up and we'll see how everyone else does, I, I don't see why he can't be that, that next guy on, on the plane. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think I, I thought about it a lot more this week. And um, if you look at, you know, even outside of form, right? Like I think Daryl DK fits the team mold maybe a little bit more than than PFOC right. and, and okay. Haji, right? In terms of, you know, again, being one of those like younger guys who's, who's kind of, um, you know, really really trying to cut his teeth in, in Europe. And, um, you know, not, not only that, obviously he provides a lot of qualities on the pitch as well. I mean, he's definitely our biggest striker, right? Our most physically imposing striker. Right. Um, it has a lot of positive qualities, you know, in and around the box. I think he's more technical than people give him uh, credit for. So yeah, I, I would probably have to, to flip if we filmed that video again today. I think based on <laughs> the like objective, objective facts and I think, uh, yeah, I think I'd probably go DK on the plane, maybe over PFOC. But like that's you said, four, four matches. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah four, that's the only thing I'm thinking about too. And, but I do agree that he offers a little bit more, I think, overall in his game, a healthy DK versus a healthy PFOC. I think PFOC, what we've seen, something's just not clicking with him in the system and maybe haven't seen too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think DK just, yeah, like you said, a little bit technical. He had physical too, um, but, he, but he offers what, what number nine does. So if he can put all that together here with West Brom, I mean, I feel like he has a little bit more tools in his toolkit per se if that makes sense yeah i agree and he's he's younger too so um yeah like you said younger, yeah, he's got more time to refine his game too which provides a lot of upside for the future and you mentioned too real quick before we move on to the next player that the championship starts this weekend we actually get a great first game it's uh west brown versus middlesbrough so we get to see oh. daryl dk up against zach stefan hopefully both start which you know that's, that's the awesome. so um, yeah, it should be a good, uh, you know, a good game for, for everyone to watch this weekend. So I don't know um, what I want to happen, Austin. <laughs> I want to get a score, but I want Seth in the 
Can't yeah, <laughs> it is tough. Yeah, that's that's true. So going into our next player, uh, we have Haji Wright. So again, keeping with that striker trend. And again, we're, we're talking about motivated strikers, right, going into the season and strikers that are in good positions too, right? I feel like, you know, DK Wright and PFOC all have landed themselves in, in pretty good positions going into the season. So, um, you know, in, in looking again closer at Haji Wright's uh, spot that he's at this year, right, it's the same team he was at last year, uh, Antalya Spor over in Turkey. And last year he was on loan there, played 34 games, had 15 goals and two assists, and really just kind of broke out, right? It really was um, a positive move for him from Denmark, where he had some success there and really got ingrained into what Coach Nuri Sahin um, had for him and, and kind of that play style they they run with. So, um, yeah, it was awesome to hear that, you know, Nuri Sahin was a big part of him coming back, right? It sounded like he really wanted Haji Wright back at the club this season. And obviously, Pat, you're very, you know – uh, very knowledgeable about Nuri Sahin and his time he spent at Liverpool. Uh, and, yeah, um, Liverpool and Dortmund, right? Kind of going hand in hand. Um, yeah, and also but, Dortmund. <laughs> yeah, like you, like you said, I think uh, just having a manager like that 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 really wants you and believes in you, I, I, that's just that's so crucial um, for our players to have that, you know, feel wanted. And uh, that's somebody, again, that, that thrives in that confidence. And, and Haji has that fire lit under him, right? Um, from what we've seen with, with Peralta's comments, right, for the USMNT, some fans and the chatter, right, you know, the, the players all see that. And I think what they're seeing with, with uh, obviously, PFOC making the move, uh, DK, right, coming back strong. You know, you have Pepe, uh, Pepe, excuse me, looking for a, a strong season there in the Bundesliga. So I, I think that's another guy that, that just has that, that, that killer instinct now. He's, he's grown up. He's learned a lot since he's jumped around in the different leagues and different scenarios where – he, he again with Nuri with the team he's at. I, there's no reason he should be, shouldn't be banging in goals there, kill it in the Turkish Superliga. Um, he just has that that more mature headspace now. I think heading into Qatar. Yeah, I really agree with that, and I, and I also think you know I really agree with what you said about being in a position with a coach that trusts you. Um, I think Haji Wright has always been a player that had talent and and. Um, you know, has a great frame, right, for a striker and, and oh, yeah. has played well as a striker in, in, you know, years past. But what really stuck out to me was just that that mentality part. A lot of times it seemed like he was not necessarily the most confident in his abilities, um, especially in his time at Schalke, right? Like some of those minutes we saw of him on the pitch, you know, he did his best, but it, it just kind of seemed off. And um, his loan to Sandhausen didn't do so hot. And uh, yeah, he had to kind of pick up his his career, right? He was kind of at a crossroads after he left Schalke of, what am I going to do? You know, he was spent a time at Venlo, right? We kind of forget about that loan too, or that, you know, move that he did. And right. um, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even, I, I just thought of it as I was talking here. So I think, yeah, I think that's so important. And, and being in a position that, uh, you know, being in a spot where he's trusted and people have confidence in him to, to you know, play well and, and be an important part of the team, I think is really going to do wonders for him. So, um, you know, I have a prediction as well for Haji. I think if he can get back to, you know, 12 to 15 goals this year in the Turkish Super Superliga, I think he could move on to a, you know, even higher club at the end of the season. And who knows, maybe if he gets, you know, a good chunk of those goals before the World Cup, then maybe he gets that third roster spot. And, uh, you know, we get to see a, a, another kind of USMNT success story. I love it. I love the predictions, man. I, I, let's keep shooting. Um, I, th I think, again, 12 or 13 minimum. I think that should be his, his minimum there. So gotcha. I'm all for it, Austin. I like that that prediction. Um, I, I saw some <laughs> before we were filming. I was looking on Twitter and I saw people like, oh, Hadi's going to win the, the golden boot there. Uh, maybe that's a little, a little ambitious, but I love it too. I love the confidence that the fans seem to have in him. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Well, I guess, uh, you know, that calls for our last player here. And this is your boy, right? I know you've talked about it a lot from the Boond American side of things. But now it looks like, not officially confirmed, but looks like he's going through medical, um, you know, verbal, things like that. Um, and that's Chris Richards uh, we're talking about, our last player, heading to Crystal Palace, another uh, American lad in London, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this move is honestly a match made in heaven. I think this is fantastic. He's 
obviously going to a place where he's going to compete um, for a lot of playing time. Obviously, they have some established backs there, but um, it's still open for the taking, right? Patrick Vieira really, really wanted him. I mean, this it looks like he's kind of, uh, again, rumored all these things of, of, of <laughs> offers and, and medicals going through. But uh, in terms of the way Vieira plays, uh, the system he has set up here uh, really suits Richard's game. Obviously, we know Richard's, right, playing in that factory system there. Uh, he's played a left center back. He he's kind of has that versatility to jump around the different roles, which will really help him, right, get some minutes here. On top of that, obviously, aerial duels being being very physical there. Um, and, and, and again, having the pinpoint accuracy of throwing the needle with his passes. Uh, you know, a player that can really, you know, again, have some of those hockey assists. We've seen some of those highlights too at his time mm-hmm. uh, with Hoffenheim to just, just being really aware and, and build a linking up play. So that's exactly what Viria wants. He has a very high pressing team and attack, the industrious midfield, and then players that can play out of the back, you know, defenders that can play out of the back and, and uh, again, you know, play, play a high line. So, It'll be interesting to see how he adapts, you know, when when this is confirmed, Austin. But I think this is a great move uh, to Palace. Yeah, well, Fab Romano called me up earlier today and said it was, <laughs> here we go, confirmed. So, <laughs> no, I, I, I just got a 9 a.m. text that said, here we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I agree with what you said. And, and you talked about aerial duels. I actually have a stat for you, Pat. So Let's from uh, match day 365, um, you know, Chris Richards was actually in the top three of highest percent of ground duels won among all U23 defenders across Europe. So that's pretty impressive. You know, you think of Chris Richards being uh, a good header of the ball, already scored some goals with his head uh, at the professional level. And um, he seems pretty strong on, on, you know, corners and, you know, defending with his head. Right. But you don't really think of, you know, his ground defensive abilities, uh, which is really positive. And another really positive thing too was uh, number one on that list was actually Mark Guehi, uh, the center back that's actually at Crystal Palace right now, formerly at Chelsea. So those guys could form a very, uh, you know, strong center back connection there. And, and I think that could be really positive for Chris to have, you know, another strong center back partner to rely on and, and kind of, uh, yeah, tag team. Yeah, that, that would be it. Amazing, a really youthful, like talented team, and I think Wiggy actually has gotten some call ups there for the national team now um, because of how impressive he was, which is pretty awesome. I mean, that that guy is honestly going to be really hard to displace. So I think it's more uh, Joachim Anderson there from Lyon, um, who mm-hmm. also had a really good partnership with Wiggy. But I think Richards can can again, depending on formations and things like that, of course, too. But that's somebody I think Anderson is direct competition where. Barring all injuries, I think Richards has the ability, uh, the defensive, the technical ability to, to get that starting job, um, you know, kind of the medium to long term. So in my opinion, maybe he's not starting week one right away. Um, I hope he does. Uh, again, once this is confirmed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> saying that, but, uh, it, it, you know, it's true. But I, I think, yeah, like you said, Wei and him will form a really, really, really solid partnership. The way that Palace plays, I mean, uh, um, I, I, they have a lot of talent up there at the attack. I mean, this is a team that's done pretty well since they've stayed up in the Premier League. Um, I can't recall the amount of years now that they've been consecutively up, but they've they've kind of they've put together a pretty pretty nice team in terms of kind of being in the mid table there, and and mid table in the Premier League's honestly no joke anymore. It, it, there's a lot of money thrown around with the top seven eight clubs. <laughs> Uh, even the bottom, right? I mean, we talk about Leeds and Harrison's wage. So I, I digress. But I think Richards, in terms of his skill set, um, the way the league suited here, the Premier League, this is a great move um, for him to really solidify his spot in, in Qatar and, and maybe starting even. Yeah, and I think, you know, we talked about Haji Wright playing for a coach that trusts in you. Uh, Patrick Vieira, like you said, really sounds like he's a big fan of Chris Richards' game. So, uh yeah, I think that could be another reason why he does so well this year and, and gets a lot of minutes and opportunities. So, yeah, I think uh, that's our list for today, right, Pat? It was uh, fun kind of projecting out who's going to do well this season. Always yeah, fun. No, I'm just getting so hyped, so excited. I'm like, I know the championship's starting here, but I just want everything to start next weekend. Awesome. I'm tired. I'm tired <laughs> of here. 
I know it's, we've gone a long time, right? There hasn't been any, you know, US, USA games for a long time now. There's been some, you know, women's Euro going on over the summer. We had the CONCACAF championship for the US, you know, WNT and um, some other games, but not the same, right? And, and preseason's not the same either. Right, right. And of course, you know, our, our women's teams always win. They kill it, right? And I just want to see the men's get slowly to that level. So <laughs> hopefully one day, one day we'll get there. But I think these players grinding out for that spot in Qatar, um, grinding out for starting spots too. Um, I mean, we had those five, but you could theoretically name 20, 25, honestly, that are on the fringe here now. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. So, yeah, thanks for watching today, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. Don't forget the content, right? Um, Instagram, we're putting out great posts, great reels, Twitter, um, engaging with you all there in the Twitter community there, the US Mint Tea Twitter. Um, so, again, make sure to check out all of that. Yeah, and we also have this episode available in podcast form. So, check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Uh, leave us a review. We appreciate all the feedback. Yeah, and I know we're, we're excited for the, the regular season to start here, but we also have some um, pretty interesting content coming down the horizon. You know, of course, we got the weekly reports, but, uh, you know, Austin, some, some potential, uh, you know, mock drafts here um, for our, our USMNT players, uh, some other episodes and collaborations in the works. So, yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited for the 2022-2023 season. Yeah, we're excited. I think we're coming back for what? Season five? Of Young Americans Abroad? It's been... Might be six, six Austin. I think we might be at six. Might be at six. All right. We'll have to check Ooh. it out after this video and see see where we're at. But it's been quite the journey, Pat. It's been fun filming with you uh, every week. And yeah, we look forward to the upcoming season. So yeah, I think with that, there's only one thing left to say. And that is one day we will win the World Cup.